Welcome to St. Mark's Worship, this beautiful fall day. I hope this finds all of you well. to this Thanksgiving week worship at St. Mark's. It's great that you have chosen to be a part of this community today. Our theme for worship this day is God's vision for us. As we prepare to celebrate a rather unusual Thanksgiving 2020, may we center our Thanksgiving around the notion that God has been incredibly generous to us all. No matter how difficult life may feel, no matter how much of a struggle you're going through at the moment, let's give thanks to God. And I invite you to give thanks along with me, singing the first verse of a very familiar hymn. Now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Amen. In a moment, Kiara Yates will be reading our scripture for us. It's Psalm 100. But first, we're going to sing a song all of life is filled with wonder. Please join in singing.
morning. I thank God for this opportunity to share his word. I'm reading Psalm 100, a song for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God and it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of God. Our guest today is Reverend Neil Christie, who is Assistant General Secretary of the General Board of Church and Society of the United Methodist Church, located on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., right next to the Supreme Court. Neil's job is to work with the entire church around the world to understand God's vision of justice, compassion, and hope for the human family. So he is certainly the right person to be speaking to us today. He's a pastor in the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference, but above that, he's a very beautiful human being with a very warm heart and an unshakable faith that is infectious. Reverend Neil Christie, welcome. Greetings St. Mark's United Methodist Church, and thank you to my good friend, the Reverend Alan Jones, for the kind invitation to share on the theme of gratitude. Diana Butler Bass says in her book, Grateful, we know that gratitude is good, and we want to be grateful, or to feel gratitude. We want to be seen as thankful people. We might even experience gratitude in any given moments. But inwardly, we know how difficult it is to practice and to sustain thanksgiving, to live a truly grateful life. And I know this is true for me. This thanksgiving is unlike any other in recent history. Our world and our lives are far more connected than they were. And yet we find ourselves at times grieving alone. And we share our suffering together, but we do it from a distance and we do it online. It is hard to be grateful when this pandemic has heightened already a pre-existing vulnerabilities to the health of our bodies, our relationships, and the wellness of our societies. Patterns of over-policing, physical harm to black and brown communities, of color. It didn't begin this year, but they are certainly starker and more visible. And our friends in Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire remind me that their desire for their governments to be held accountable resembles what we desire for our own nation. Advocating for human dignity, human rights, the sacred worth of every person, it's at the core of what it means to be a just, resilient, anti-racist, anti-tribal church. And so it is hard to be grateful when chronic poverty and loss of income, especially among the most vulnerable, first-line responders, frontline workers, when it's coupled with the shock of sudden unemployment in our own lives, underemployment in our families, standstill migration policies, they injure children, they injure families across borders. They redefine what it means for us to practice radical hospitality as a church. And in recent conversations with United Methodist siblings in the Philippines, they've shared with me that climate change has increased and the frequency of typhoons has displaced entire villages. How do we, how do we practice gratitude? True gratitude, real gratefulness then, is a kind of transformative thanksgiving that makes all things new. It cannot be quiet in the face of personal injustice. We move from a personal ethic of gratefulness toward a public one. That's what Butler Bath says. And so St. Mark's in this climate, the act of public thanksgiving is an intentional decision. It is active. It is necessary. It is needed. It is a choice we make as a community when we are called to do the hard work of healing, of repairing our lives in the world. 
I am moved by the Benedictine brother David Stendhal Ross' invitation to fundamentally alter our perspective, my perspective. Brother David says, it is not happiness that makes us grateful. It is gratefulness that makes us happy. Every moment is a gift, and sometimes a difficult gift is given to us. I want this to be my spiritual practice that leads me to deeper civic and personal engagement. Brother David says, when we are grateful, we are not afraid. We face difficult realities as a precious teacher, as a precious teacher. If you are grateful, you act out of a sense of enough, not out of scarcity, and you're willing to share. If you're grateful, we enjoy the differences between people. That changes the power pyramid under which we live. And so St. Mark's, as we prepare for a new kind of thanksgiving, I invite you to practice gratitude. When things are unsure, uncertain, when they're unpromised, lean into what you are grateful for. And for me today, it's my teenage children, Kalia and Kai, my spouse, Lois, the congregation I worship with, the many colleagues that I know, in Washington, D.C., around the world, who are committed to justice and to peace. I'm grateful for a home, healthy food, meaningful ministry, and especially for the cherry blossom that decided to bloom in the middle of November. Honor the gifts that God has placed in your life because of and not in spite of the circumstances. And let the peace of Christ abide in your hearts, which indeed you were called in the one body, and to be thankful. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Neil Christie, for your generous, loving, and challenging words. I don't know how much you are struggling with your plans for Thanksgiving, but as the pandemic statistics get worse and worse, it's becoming increasingly difficult to see how most of us can do anything close to our normal celebration of Thanksgiving. Gathering the family around the table with the turkey, the gravy, and the green beans and the mushroom soup with the onions on top, not to mention the pumpkin pie. None of them will taste quite so good without all the family around. And yet feeling sadness uh, uh, might cause you and me to feel guilty in a world where so many people are suffering so much more. Increasing numbers of people are experiencing the symptoms of COVID-19 and losing family members and worrying over family members who are in intensive care. And so many people have lost their homes and their jobs, their livelihoods. I shouldn't need reminding to be deeply thankful for all that I do have rather than the things that I don't. Speaking for myself, I have been deeply blessed in my life in so many ways. And so I think have most of us. Thanks be to God for the comforts of home and the love of family. Thanks be to God for the beauty of creation, for the turning of the leaves, for the rich diversity of the human family. As the hymn says, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh, thank the Lord for all God's love. It's believed that Psalm 100 has been repeated more often throughout history than any other psalm, including the beloved 23rd Psalm. It's believed that it was part of the temple liturgy 3,000 years ago. So everybody would sing, enter God's gates with thanks, enter God's courtyard with praise. Thank God, bless God's name, because God is good. God's loyal love lasts forever. God's faithfulness lasts generation after generation. And so in this last worship service of this 2020 series, our theme is God's vision for us. So please stop thinking about how you see your own life of faith unfolding after 2020. Rather, as you enter into 2021, 
please ask yourself, what is God's vision for me, for my life, for our life, for all of us? What is God doing in my life through me and in our lives together as a community, through our community? God is at work in you. God is fixing you up to reinvent the world with the power of love. God is looking beyond the violence, the bigotry, the lies, the indifference to human suffering, the indifference to racism. God is saying, I see something so much better for you and for the entire human family. And not only does God have a vision for you and me, God provides us with the spirit energy to make it happen. We are not left alone. God gives you and me the urgency, the passion, the skills, the opportunities to make sensitivity and compassion, justice and peace real in the world. God is at work in you right now. Thanks be to God. You, yes, you. And so there is reason to be thankful. Thanksgiving is the only response that the psalmists promise that God's loyal love lasts forever. God is good, and that never changes. So come before God, says the psalmist, with shouts of joy this Thanksgiving. Enter those gates with thanksgiving and those courtyards with praise. So next week, as you sit down to have your turkey and pumpkin pie or whatever, maybe take a, a few minutes to pull out your Bible and read Psalm 100 and remind yourself and those with you that it's not just all the material things for which you are thankful, for which we are thankful. It's not only the beauty and wonders of creation. It's not only the love of family and friends and the thrilling diversity of our global community. It is the gift of God's loving presence in your heart and soul that nourishes, sustains, and drives your life. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join me in prayer. Please take a moment now to go deep inside yourself to that very special sacred place within where you encounter the living God. And when I say it at the end of each short prayer, God, meet us in the silence, please respond and hear our prayer. God, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks in the season of Thanksgiving for being who you are. And we give you thanks that you have called each of us to the life of faith and called us into community so that we can love you and love each other. We pray that each of us may be faithful in responding to your call to love both in word and actions so that healing and renewal may break out in your world. God, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We give thanks for a world of abundance that surrounds us, and we pray for those who are struggling to survive. Here in Sacramento, across the nation, and around the world. We pray for a world where love may be, prevail, where nobody goes to bed hungry, we pray for a, a world where war may cease, oppression be ended, and poor people find hope. May we each work to build a world where racism and oppression are banished, and where every child can grow up knowing that they are loved and their basic needs are cared for. God, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We pray as we must for our nation. We pray that we may all live as thankful people, giving thanks for each other no matter our differences and ensuring an equitable distribution of wealth. 
and resources for all people. A community where love prevails. God, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. As we give thanks for our relative health and the reality that most of us have health care providers, we pray for those within our community who are suffering today, those who are grieving, those who are sick, those who are worried how they're going to pay for their prescriptions. We pray that we may be a healing community, loving each other and supporting each other whenever sickness or hardships appear. God, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. And so now we pray together the words of our Lord's Prayer as we say together, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My thanks to everyone who helped to lead today's worship, to Kiara Yates, who read for us, to Reverend Neil Christie for sharing with us so beautifully, to musicians, Kath Fenimore Brown, Jim and Jean Strathdy, and Robert Rauch, and to video technicians, PJ Rauch and Irene Celadon. We're going to sing again now. Please join us in singing. You will repeat each line as it's sung as we sing together. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Forgive us, God, for the harm we cause. Forgive us, God, for the harm we cause. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Help us heal our common home. Help us heal our common home. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Help us save your sacred earth. Help us save your sacred earth. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Help us save your sacred earth. Help us save your sacred earth. And so I invite you to go into this week of Thanksgiving with a smile and a generous heart for everyone. Be joyful and thankful. Fill your mind with thoughts of everything for which you are thankful. Maybe make a list and fill your heart with thanksgiving for all who love you and pray generously for those who don't. Always remember that God has a vision just for you and you are part of the movement that will indeed transform the world. And may the peace of Christ fill all your days. Amen.